Today we explore the best mods for your Bamboo Lab 3D printer. Yes, you saw that right, I've just launched a second channel about going racing, so please check the link in the description. But this video is about Bamboo Lab printers, and they've been around long enough now to establish a great reputation. The X1 Carbon and the P1P are fast, high quality, and have a very smooth out-of-box experience. In short, they just work. But that doesn't mean we can't make some small but worthwhile quality of life improvements. This list has been put together with the help of my patrons. I'm excited to share it with you, so let's jump in. We're going to start our list with the slicing software. Bamboo Studio is the default option and is forked from Prusa Slicer, which means it's full featured and nicely refined. As a bonus, it offers direct control and monitoring of the printer, but that doesn't mean that it's the only option. Firstly, Simplify 3D version 5 introduced support for the Bamboo Lab printers. And if you run the configuration assistant and search for your machine, you'll be able to add it, which means you'll have a realistic representation of the bed and all of the specific required scripts in place for things like the start and end G code. What I couldn't find, however, was a way for S3D to send jobs wirelessly through to the printer. I selected Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, but both the automatic and manual IP address connection methods failed, so that was as far as I got. So if you're looking for an alternate slicer that retains all web functionality, I've actually made a video about one before, back when it was called Soft Fever. Soft Fever is the developer and this is now called Orca Slicer, and as you can see, it's forked from Bamboo Studio. That means apart from this color, it's got all of the same functionality as the vanilla slicer. But on top of that, it offers a lot more, such as support for many third-party printers, including pre-made profiles, and of course, a way to set up your own custom printer, starting with a generic preset. Just like Bamboo Studio, it will talk to the printer, allow you to manage the AMS, everything like that, but it will also talk to Octoprint and Clipper web interfaces, loading it within the device tab after you've given the IP address. There are a few extra settings available when slicing, and most importantly, there is a calibration menu, where with a couple of clicks, you'll be able to set up various tests to dial in your machine. Probably the most useful of these is a built-in test to calibrate pressure advance for non-Bamboo Lab filaments that don't have the RFID tag. The way I see it, you'd be silly not to use this version of the slicer, as it's got everything the stock slicer does, but more on top of that. And just quickly, if you notice Orca Slicer prints are slower than Bamboo Studio, that's because by default, Bamboo Studio has two wall loops, whereas Orca Slicer has three so you can always reduce that to two to get back some speed, but I happen to think three is better for part strength. This next one I learned about from James of the Cloud42 channel. Some users have experienced errors on their printer, saying cannot pull back filament or cannot insert filament. Personally, my machines haven't suffered from this, but for those who have, we have this fix from our Angry Badger. The theory is that the PTFE tube curls and then the filament gets jammed on its way in or out. The aim of this simple bracket is simply to provide structure for a gentler curve. This picture shows it in place and it's much like the base of the cable chain already fitted to the printer. The text here is quite descriptive and it claims this is a remix of a Bamboo Lab design that has been provided to customers via support. There's also detailed printing settings as well as installation instructions. You should print this in something that handles heat better than PLA and print it standing up as shown. To install, we remove the magnetic face of the tool head place it to the side, and then push down on the grey section that the PTFE tube is inserted into. With the tube released, we can thread it through the new bracket, reinsert that back into the print head, support the print head and push the bracket down quite firmly, which should allow it to clip into place, and if it's done correctly, it will be able to swivel. I didn't have that error, but it's such a quick print that I figured it was worth future-proofing and I can easily remove it if I end up having any issues. Next up, we're going to discuss options for the bed and some little hacks too. When I tested the P1P, I really liked the powder coated textured bed, but it did have a warning on it, not for LiDAR use, so I initially didn't use it in the X1. But the comments on that P1P video told me that the plate worked well on the X1 Carbon, and I can confirm that they are right, and I use it regularly for PTG and PLA on this machine. If you don't have one of these sheets, they're currently on sale in the Bamboo store. 
but there are other third party options available too. Wham Bam now have a plate to match using their PEX, which you might be familiar with from other printers. And my patrons also told me about this special patterned plate. I went for this version with textured PEI on one side and this special PEO film on the other. If we dig into the description, we can see that the PEO side is suitable for PLA, TPU and PETG. Intrigued, I ordered one to try out. And I'm pleased to report that I've had great success with this plate. You clean it with IPA and paper towel like most other beds. And when I use it, I select the textured PEI plate. It fits into the printer like any other bamboo plate. And the only disadvantage is it doesn't self-release after it cools down. So to remove your print, you should let it cool and then gently flex it off. And once you do, you will find that the triangular pattern has transferred onto the underside of your model, which looks quite striking. I'm glad I purchased this plate to have the option for something aesthetic without putting in any extra effort. Let's test its adhesion with the bracket from earlier. PLA grip was excellent and I didn't have a single print detach. That includes this bracket, which completed on the first attempt. PTG sticks, but not as well as PLA. And partway through this print, the model detached. I reprinted, this time with the brim, and the model was successful, so PETG is in fact possible. I also tested ASA, which is not recommended. There was some grip, but not enough to keep the model in place. For ASA, I usually use the engineering plate, and I apply the Bamboo Lab glue stick. And this is remarkably effective, but I don't really like using the glue, because I never wash off the excess, and over time it builds up and becomes disgusting. My patron David mentioned that he had great success with this nanopolymer adhesive from Vision Miner. You pour some on, use the brush to spread it around, and it's a lot neater than using glue stick. Then I remembered that I had already purchased a similar product called Dimafix, which is available in Australia from X3D. It's specifically suited for ASA, ABS, and other high temp filaments. To use it, you give it a big shake, and then apply a thin and even coating over the cold plate. Even with a full coating, it stays very thin and looks more like residue than glue. I tested this on a large wide object with ASA that would normally warp off on an open frame machine. And like the original bamboo glue stick, the object stayed stuck, but still flexed off nicely once the plate had cooled down. And unlike the glue stick, all we have left behind is some slight discoloration rather than a thick coat of gunk. Using glue sticks on the bed was one of the weaknesses for me when first testing the X1 Carbon, so I'm glad now we have lots of other options. Let's shift our attention now to getting the most out of the AMS, or Automatic Material System. In case you didn't know, that's the filament box that you can add to a Bamboo Lab machine with a single AMS holding up to four different spools of filament, which allows multi-material or multi-color printing. Each AMS has two compartments designed to take desiccant bags to keep the filament inside dry. And on the touch screen or in the slicer, we can monitor how the humidity is going. You can keep things dry for longer if your spools have a hollow on the inside like this, as you can place extra desiccant inside the center of the spool. Because filament spools only touch the AMS on the outside, this hollow is unneeded and therefore a suitable place to store more desiccant. When using the AMS, the filament is guided on the back of the machine by PTFE tube, and some sections are easy to unload in service. This section going into the buffer, however, I can only describe as having a design flaw, because we can't reach the fitting inside, at least not without using an external tool like a set of pliers. Fortunately, we have some free printable options to address this. The first we're looking at is by ST Printing, and consists of two different parts. The first part is open on one side, which means we can slip it over the tube when it's already in the printer. We push in, pull the tube out, and the job is done. The second piece is the same, except continuous instead of having the cutout, which means we can slide it onto the tube, push it into position, and if we ever want to remove the tube, we push inwards and then pull the tube. It's a quick print and a very simple solution, but there's still one other part that makes this part of the printer difficult to deal with, and that's these black cables that have the release lever facing the machine so you can't get your finger in. So here's an alternative that also addresses that with this bamboo AMS disconnect tool by Jody. There's multiple versions available, some with magnets and hooks. This is the plain one, but printed with two colors. One end of it is designed to slide over the tube, allowing you to pull it out. And the other end is designed to slide down over the plug, pushing down the tab and making it removable without any further disassembly. It's another quick and easy print that I would highly recommend having on hand. 
But what about if you want to print with an external roller filament without disconnecting and disabling the AMS? For this, we have this Bowden tube wire splitter made by Robert. There's a few of these available, but I particularly like this version because we have a base SCL to print, but then we also have lots of variations, including ones with different clearance in case the base one doesn't quite fit for you. Once printed, we're going to need to assemble with some spare pneumatic fittings. You'll need three PC4 M10 connectors, the ones where the PTFE tube can pass the whole way through. The splitter comes with the threads already in place, so we simply need to screw in the fittings and tighten them. Here I'm demonstrating off the printer for clarity, but when you insert the PTFE tube, it needs to go a fair way past the end of the fitting. You should also check that filament can easily pass from one end to the other without any obstructions. The side with two fittings is the inlet, and the side with a single fitting is the outlet. When we fit to the machine, this tube on the right is the one we're going to intercept. The single outlet will go into the fitting at the top of the printer, the AMS will go into one of the double fittings, and then a spare piece of tube can go to your external spool. This is just a random roll, but I'm guessing a lot of people would run to a dedicated heated dry box. To print from the external spool, we need to load the filament into the print head, which we can do from the touch screen or slicer. I'll then right click the model and set the filament to match what I'll be using externally, in this case PLA. And then when we go to send the job to the printer, we need to untick enable AMS and double check that the listed filament matches what we're feeding externally. During the print, the touch screen and slicer will tell us that we're running from an external spool. To print from the AMS again, we'll need to manually unload the external spool from the machine and then in the slicer, right click and select a filament loaded into the AMS. And finally, when we send the print job, we need to make sure enable AMS is ticked once more. With this part in workflow, I was able to print two calibration cubes externally and from the AMS without unplugging anything. What do we do if we want to print from a roll of filament that doesn't fit into the AMS? Before I printed the splitter, I had this less than ideal shortcut solution. But let's say I want to use this recycled X3D PLA, which I use for most of my printing, but the spool is far too wide for the AMS. Fortunately, the community provides some great solutions for this. The most elaborate and quite frankly, a piece of art is this filament spool switcher and winder by Miklos Kazili. We load up the two spools and then use a drill to turn the mechanism and this will move the filament feed back and forth for a perfect wind. I find this absolutely mesmerizing to watch, but it is quite an involved print with many components. As an alternative for those who aren't going to do this that often, we have this spool winder remix by Nafka. There's only two components here that don't need any special printing considerations such as support. Like the first design we saw, you'll notice there's a hex cutout for attaching to a drill. And to start, we take an empty spool and wind the mechanism together from either side. You'll need something separate to put your existing roll of filament. Here I'm using the open source Prusa mini spool. Then it's simply a matter of inserting the end of the filament into the empty spool and turning the drill to wind the filament from one spool to the other. If you want it to be neat, you need to manually move the spool back and forth. And quite frankly, I was terrible at this. By the end of the process, I had refined my technique to not go too fast with the drill and then guide the winding with my other hand. I'm sure almost anyone watching this video could have done a neater job, but for how easy this is to print, it's a pretty good solution. You just have to be careful to not turn on the drill too fast. This whole transfer took me somewhere between five to 10 minutes. And as you might hope, I was then able to print with this filament on its new spool inside the AMS. This next one sounds silly, but is simple and in my opinion, essential. Bamboo Lab printers, after purging and wiping the nozzle, send the waste filament out of what is known as the poop chute. The trouble is, this can build up pretty fast, and I'm ashamed to admit, I've just been letting mine fall down the back of my bench onto the floor. Once again, we have a free and printable solution, and there's quite a few to choose from, but I went for this one by Fantasy 3D Print Shop, because it didn't obstruct the exit path up the top, so the waste filament would fall around the corner and not clog up the top. It doesn't need support, so it is easy to print, but it does use up around half a kilo of filament. No magnets or screw on mounting, it simply rests in place behind the machine. And so far for me, it's working exactly as intended, so I recommend it. Lucky last, something built into the X1 that you might not know about. When I need to dry my filament, I use a cheap food dehydrator. But on the enclosed X1, if we come to settings and then utilities, we can see we have dry filament. You can select the filament you'll be drying from the list on the top, 
and if the printer is empty, click prepare. This will lower the bed to the bottom, allowing you to insert some filament spools. The final step is to simply press start. The touchscreen will then count down how long is left. The printer's bed is the heat source and I found that it got up to 45 degrees inside. It does talk about using a printed lid or a cardboard box to seal in the temperature so perhaps that would make it higher. Eventually the timer will expire and hopefully your filament has less moisture. I'm not sure that it's quite as good as a dedicated system but it is included for free. A big thank you to my patrons, especially David, for helping me prepare this list. And I'm sure there's many other mods available or on the way, and we're only touching the tip of the iceberg. So please share with me your favourite Bamboo Lab printer mods down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy upgraded 3D printing. Oh, and check out my new channel too. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.